Hello, I'm Jeff Archer with Esri's 3D content team. In this video, we're going to go through the fourth and final step of the Campus Viewer Tools technology preview, that is configuring the 3D Campus Viewer app. I'm just going to quickly go through a little introduction here, and then we'll get right into downloading, deploying, and modifying the application. So really quickly, we'll go through in this video the dependencies that are required for this application to run. We'll talk about the required services that we need to um, make note of, uh, where their location is and what the URLs are. We'll deploy the app files. That's simply a matter of uh, unzipping and copying them into a valid directory. We'll test the default app. Um, as it's downloaded, the app will work, um, but it only works with hosted services that we've set up for the sample data in the Campus Viewer tools. And if you want it to work with your own data, you can edit the app configuration file uh, and point to your own services for the web scene and for the network service. And then finally, we'll test the modified app uh, in a browser and we'll look at some tricks that you can use to make sure that you're looking at the latest version. So that's really it for the introduction. Right now we're gonna jump over to how we can deploy the application and edit that configuration file. The first step in deploying the Campus Viewer Tools application is obviously to download the Campus Viewer Tools from the website. Uh, you can get to that using bit.ly slash Campus Viewer Tools or by searching in the gallery for Campus Viewer Tools. And when you download and unzip that file, you've probably done this by now because you've been through the other three steps. Uh, just want to mention it here as well. Once you access and download the zip file and unzip it, You'll see four individual folders, and in this final step, we're going to configure the Campus Viewer web app. So drilling into this folder, we can see the PDF document uh, for instructions on basically everything we're going through in this video are also contained in these instructions. If you find you learn better that way or have something that can guide you along, you could print that out. Uh, the other thing we have is the application itself. So by default, it's called the ECV underscore 3D. And deploying the application is as simple as copying it and then pasting it into a valid web root directory. So on my machine, I'm running IIS. Uh, the default web root is www root in the C inet pub directory. So I can go there, I can paste my file. And now the ECV 3D application has been deployed. It's just that easy. So obviously this would be a little different if you're using Apache or if you're on Linux or something like that. Um, but the good news is no matter how you deploy it, as long as you get it to a valid web, uh, web directory or virtual directory, you can then immediately load the application. So I'm going to do that here. And you'll have to browse to the index.html or enable that through your uh, web server in order to make that the default file. And you'll see that the application loads. And this is really where all of the previous three steps in the Campus Viewer Tools technology preview come together. So if I go to the view switcher, I can select which view I want to see. These are the views that were uh, configured in the web scene when we went through the publishing and sharing step. So I can switch to an interior view. Now obviously in my home view, I can see the facade that we created for the building from the pr procedural rule. I can see the trees that we added and so on. So the real thing that we want to do here, though, is to kind of show off all the different stuff we can do. So here's another uh, part of a scene that we created uh, with interior spaces with our partial height walls, that kind of stuff. You can see that streaming in. And really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and search for Marjorie Elson. Let's go ahead and uh, choose her. Now we can automatically get to Marjorie's office. And the other thing we can do is route. Uh, we can route from Marjorie's office here to, let's pick something on OA3. Whoops, three. And let's say Olinda Brat's office. Let's uh, generate a route from uh, first floor building O to third floor building OA. So here we have it. We have our route. Uh, we also have the restrictions that we put into the network so we can uh, prioritize elevator or stairs. And you can really see how all the work that we've done in the previous three steps really comes together in this application. Here we have a nice 3D view of our campus. We have the ability to route from A to B, prioritize stairs or elevator, and so on. So 
You can also see a lot of the other core elements from the JavaScript API and dealing with 3D. Uh, you can actually see the help that comes up when you toggle over or, or mouse over some of these things. So you can switch the way that the default uh, navigation happens. By default, I can pan with the left mouse and, and tilt with the right mouse. I can switch that here. So then I tilt with the left mouse and pan with the right mouse. So whichever you're more comfortable with, uh, we have a nice little binary switch here that you can you can go back and forth. So the focus of this application is twofold. Um, obviously, I can route. That's the one of the main functions of this application. You can also kind of just search and explore. Uh, so I can click on different offices and different interior spaces. I can see you know what's going on here. We have the men's room. I can click on the different conference rooms. It'll tell me what these things are and center and scale the map or the camera to that area. So that's pretty much it for how the application works by default. Uh, we went through some key components here, the view switching, the ability to search, the ability to click, and get some uh, basic information about the spaces inside the building. And you also see all the different elements of the scene. So all of these things, again, we've configured beforehand. We bring them all uh, together in this application. Now let's take a look at how we actually do that. It's a fairly simple process. So looking back at the files for the application, I'm here in the web root directory. If I go into the app folder, there's a folder called config. Now inside config is config.js, and this is the active configuration file for this application. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the config, and then we've also uh, included a sample uh, for if you're connecting to a portal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open both of these with Notepad++. Uh, this is a free download application that does a pretty good job. You can see it color codes my JavaScript, uh, just kind of a helpful thing. If you're a JavaScript developer, chances are you have a preference for which editor you want to use. Uh, for most people, though, Notepad++ is probably good enough. So taking a look at config.js, we can see here at the beginning this define function contains everything about our application that we're going to need to change. So here we have the app. We can change things like the header title, the logo image, uh, the link. If we click on the image, uh, if we want it to take us to a certain location on the web, we can have it do that. And we also have the portal URL. In this case, we're using ArcGIS Online, so it's just ArcGIS.com. We also input the web scene ID. You can obtain this from ArcGIS Online at the very end of the URL for the item. Uh, this is the uh, unique pointer to this web scene that we've configured for the application. You can also see group layers that we have defined. Um, basically, this is going to define our floor switcher. So you notice we had the option to switch from floor 1, 2, or 3. And the key here is that however you've configured your web scene, you need these values for the group layer name to match explicitly. These are case-sensitive values. Now, we also have search info. Uh, you can define multiple search um, sources. And here we have source 1 and source 2. Now if we look up here at source 1, you can see the query URL location and we also have a related a relationship ID and related fields and a relationship URL. What we've done here is we've actually made a relate from the offices themselves to the employees that work in those offices. And again we covered some of this in, in step 3. All you really need to know here is that we want to be able to query those in both directions in the application. So when you change these in the configuration file, you want to pay close attention and make sure that you list out for the room search. You want to search for the room first and then get the related employee from that search. Now, the flip side of that is if we're looking for people, obviously we'll want to search against the employee table first and then go through that to get to our room number. So we allow going in both directions within the application. And you'll notice that here we have 0 as the secondary and 1 as the primary on our search URLs. And these are going to be flipped if we're looking in the other direction, right? So we have rooms as the primary at layer 0 in our feature service. And then next we'll have the relationship URL is actually layer 1 in our feature service. So one other thing to point out here, and if you're using a portal. Uh, one of the things I wanted to be sure and point out in this video is the nece necessity for making sure that you understand these attribute names. So you'll notice here that these are lowercase and then the default ArcGIS Online they're all uppercase. 
The reason for this is the default uh, data store for a portal is going to be PostgreSQL. Now Postgres will make all of your attribute uh, names lowercase by default. So that's one reason why we provided this sample. Here I'll go ahead and click on the copy the URL actually. Let me copy this and go back to my browser and if I paste this in a browser I can use the endpoint to my advantage as I'm going through the configuration file. So once that page loads I can scroll down and I can see the actual fields with their names and I can even copy and paste directly from the endpoint here. So just to illustrate that point again I'll go back to the ArcGIS Online config I'll copy this URL paste it in my browser and now when I scroll down I can see that these values are actually in uppercase so just a, a little trick there to make sure that you get the right values it's a, a good practice to copy and paste these values from the actual endpoint from uh, your search URL now quickly we're going to go through the rest of the things uh, if it feels like we're kind of glossing over this, definitely take a look at the PDF. Uh, we go into uh, more detail about what each one of these values are. Uh, in the interest of time, though, uh, we don't want to make a super long video, so we'll just kind of go through some of these. So the different searches, what we're going to do is to um, set the returned info, info from the search and from both the primary and the related table. Um, so we also want to set up the display info. Uh, this is what's going to show up in that blue side panel, uh, and we can define all of that information here for each one of our sources. So if we scroll down, you can see here the second uh, search source that we've configured. And if we keep going, you can see that we can change little things like the text that's by default in the text uh, search box. So by default, that's going to be find people or places. We can change that if we add another data source. Uh, you can also see the default floor field. The naming convention for each one of the strings, the identifiers for things like trees and textures and so on. And really importantly as well, we kind of call it out here with a couple of comments so you can find it really easily, is the route task URL. So if you change the route task uh, based on section two in the Campus Viewer tools, this is where you'll actually put that in there. And again, you'll want to go to the endpoint for that routing task and make sure that you get your restriction names correct. In some cases, these, you know, there's no standard really for what these things are. So it's a good idea to get them from the URL and then put them here in the configuration file. You can also change some of the things like how the route looks, the path color and size, and the elevator path color and size, so on and so forth. You can also modify the start symbol and end symbol. And you can set the symbol Z offset if you want it to be hover a little bit higher or a little bit lower than what we provided for you. Now, finally, we have what's called the renderers for web slide. Uh, for the interior view, you can actually point to a web-based renderer, and you can change basically the look and feel of that layer, override whatever is in the web scene with this link here. If you're interested in more information about that, again, I, I ask you to, to go back to the um, PDF document and read through that. If you still have any questions, feel free to drop us a comment on the download page. So really quickly, I'm just going to show, instead of copying and pasting all these values, I'm going to go ahead in my, in the home here, I'm going to go ahead and just change the original config to config AGOL. I need administrator access to do that. So, and then I'll also change the name of the portal sample to just config.js and then I'll also grant administrator access to do that. So essentially I've swapped out my config file for the application. Now if you try this in your office it probably won't work uh, because this configuration file is looking at a local portal that I have access to here on my internal network. Unless you have a similar portal defined in your configuration file it won't work correctly. So let's go back to the campus viewer itself. It's going to be my second tab. Now, one of the tricks you can use, every time you edit a website, sometimes you have um, browsers will cache information about the web page that you just saw, and we kind of want to avoid that. And I'm using Google Chrome here, and the Google Chrome DevTools 
open if you hit Control shift i they actually have some really neat uh, features to allow you to be sure that you've cleared the cache out. So when you hit Control shift i you'll see this uh, DevTool window come up. That allows you to right-click on the Refresh button and go to Empty Cache and Hard Reload. So if you edit the config file and you do that, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to read your config file fresh again from scratch. So now you may not see a whole lot of change in the application. I mean, we're still looking at building O and OA. Uh, the difference here now is that we're actually looking at these from a portal. Uh, we're not actually looking at ArcGIS online. So you can see the data start to stream in. Let me turn the dev tools off. But the behavior of the application is exactly the same. The difference now is that we actually have switched this to be a local portal instead of ArcGIS online. So I'll switch back to home here. Again, we have the um, search set up. If I go to 01 and choose, let's say, a conference room, there I can see my conference room. If I want to route to here from, again, let's pick something on OA3. Let's uh, go from conference room to conference room. You can see the route generate. And by default, it uses the stairs. We can also switch that to be an elevator. So that really is it. Uh, it's as simple as just editing the config file. All of the work that you've done in the previous steps really comes together here. Um, again, just make sure that you use the endpoint REST URLs to gather all the attribute information that you need for the search URLs and also for the routing task. As long as you keep that rule of thumb in mind, you should be fine. Um, if for some reason the application doesn't load correctly, you can use the Chrome Dev Tools and other browsers actually have developer tools with them as well that can write things out to the console and give you a hint on, on uh, what's going on. Uh, but chances are you might have a typo or you might have a, an attribute name that's misspelled or something like that. So just take your time and make sure that you get everything right in the configuration file and everything should work for you. And that concludes all the work involved in setting up and deploying the Campus Viewer. Um, and we hope you've enjoyed the uh, technology preview and we hope you find it useful in your own workflows. Thank you very much.